Naka mic ako. Welcome. Oh. Maui Nui Makai Network Series, Speakers Guest Speaker Series featuring Milo Lee tonight. And we have some babies on the call. So we thought we'd start with some protocols tonight. And I'll do an Oli that was written by my Auntie Cordine Bailey up in Kula that has to do with why we, many of us, are doing this work for the next generation for our Kiki. And it talks about um, Mawa Maui, if Mawa Maui is in perpetuity, Kawa Ko, that we're doing it together as a verb in perpetuity together. And so hopefully the baby's voices will just add to, to our space. Um, and I was on a call with Uncle Bobby Alkane earlier today, and he talked about how spirituality is so important to us as Hawaiians and how everything we do, whether it's for the mountains or the sea or the places in between, is about how we connect spiritually together. So one of the ways our kupuna gave us this is to oli. So I'd like to offer an oli today. It's a oli mele um, for the aina. And if um, you could join me, and if you're able to, if you put kuiluna to stand with me. I was taught to breathe deeply three times before oli. One, to feel the aina beneath my feet. Even if you're in a place with concrete or wooden floors, you can still feel the aina beneath you and ground you in your place. Two, to let anything else that's bothering you, to let it drift off your shoulders. And three, to set positive intentions for the space we're in today together. And that's to hear and learn these lessons, these beautiful lessons for Milo Lee. I want to thank Karn for that beautiful music. Yeah, you love that music. And Auntie Claudia in advance for the beautiful pule. And here we go. Afterwards, if, if we can exchange ha together by breathing again afterwards, that would be wonderful. Mahalo. Ye malamai kai na no na kaua kaua. Ye malamai kai na no na kaua kaua. O olohi kaua no na kaua kaua. O olohi kaua no na kaua kaua. E malamai kai na me kamana o no na keki. E malamai kai na me kamana o no na keki. Ia i kai na no na kaua kau. Ia i kai na no na kaua kau. Aloha i kai na no na kaua kau. Aloha i kai na no na kaua kau. E ala, e ala, e ala. E hie. E mele no kai na. Ai, mele no kai na. Hello. Epule kako. Kapuli no kamalu malu kapuli lokahi. A prayer for unity and protection. Kamala malama o ke akua e ho'opuni maya kako. The light of akua surrounds us. Ke aloha o ke akua e kipuni maya kako. The love of akua enfolds us. Kamana o ke akua e ho'opa kele mai a kako. The power of akua protects us. Ke alo o ke akua e malama mai a kako. The presence of akua watches over us. Makahi a kako e hele akua e ke akua no. Wherever we are, akua is. Aumene. Aloha. I'm Claudia Kalaola and I'm the Po'o for the Maui Nui Makai Network. And we welcome everyone who's joined us today. And we're so happy and privileged to be able to provide, you know, these events and to be able to share it with um, all of our communities in Hawaii you know, and all over the world. Um, we have so much valuable information that um, we as Indigenous people can share um, our traditions, our culture, and um, also the ways that um, that help us to to be sustainable and to sustain our 
our ohana. And the world has a lot to learn from us. And so these, these types of events is really important. And we're just happy that you're here to join us. Um, we welcome our ohana from Milolii. And um, I know that you're gonna just enjoy all the information and, and their traditions and their, their ways of um, taking care of their their uh, aina and their ocean, their kai. So I'll turn it over to Karen now, our coordinator, and she will do some introductions and we'll get started. Mahalo. Karen? Mahalo and Claudia for the pule and mahalo noi for the beautiful oli. Um, aloha everyone, my name is Karen Osuga. I'm the coordinator for the Maui Nui Makai Network. And I just wanted to thank everyone for joining us for the second episode of the Malama Ikekai speaker series this evening. Um, tonight, we're thrilled to have the folks from the Miloli Ohana with us to share about their stewardship efforts over the last 30 plus years, um, their goals and objectives and the proposed boundaries and rules for their CBSFA. Um, but before I hand the floor over to our amazing speakers, I did want to briefly introduce the Maui Nui Makai Network and the speaker series for anyone who is new to this group. Um, the Maui Nui Makai Network is a network of seven community groups across Maui Nui and three supporting organizations. And our mission is to connect communities across Maui Nui to care for and restore healthy ecosystems on which Hawaii's people depend. Our purpose is to share and learn from our diverse experiences, lessons, and best practices to help our member sites care for their Makai areas. Um, and this Malama Ikekai speaker series is our latest effort um, meant to inspire and inform Hawaii's community leaders. Um, and it's a companion to our Malama Ikekai community action guide, which we released last October. Um, so if you haven't checked that out yet, you can find that on our website. Um, topics that this speaker series hopes to explore uh, will include case studies and experiences of indigenous and local community management of marine areas, coal management, replenishment and protected area planning, community engagement, and more. Um, and the speaker series will be held monthly on the third Thursday of each month, and it's free to the public. So please mark your calendars and spread the word to all who might be interested. Um, during the presentation, if you have any questions that come to mind, please type them into the chat. We'll have some time at the end to go over them and get to as many as we can at the end of this. Um, and then I just want to briefly introduce our panelists. Also, you already met Auntie Claudia, um, who is the chair of the Ma Nui Makai Network this year. Um, Noilani Lee is our representative from Kahonua Momona. Um, Scott Crawford represents Kipohulu Ohana, and we also have Uncle Mac Poipoi uh, representing Hui Malama Omo Omomi. So those are some of our member um, communities at, with the network. And now I would like to introduce our speakers. Uh, we have Kaimi Kaupiko and Lila Kaupu, and we also have Kehao Springer, who's going to be helping us out uh, kind of behind the scenes sharing the presentation as well. Um, so. Right before we um, jump into your folks's part, I just wanted to do a quick poll. Um, so you should see that popping up on your screens now. There's a couple questions in there. Let us know where you're joining in from, if you know where Milali is, and do you know what a CBSFA is? All right, so we are almost there. Okay, so I'm gonna share back our results. Um, most of our group, about 63%, are from Maui. Uh, we've got 
one person from Oahu, two from Hawaii Island. Almost everyone knows where Mila Li'i is, one person isn't quite sure. And most of you know what a CBSFA is as well. So that is your audience, folks. Um, I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Mila Li'i Ohana. You can go ahead and take the floor. Oh, mahalo nui, Karen, um, Antikaria, and Noi. Um, thank you guys so much for allowing us to come and share about our work here on the Big Island. And um, we're so glad to be able to share to um, the Maui Nui Network and many of our friends over there. So um, Kihau will be doing our, our PowerPoint slide and then um, me and Lila will be presenting. So um, mahalo again, so we can, um, I will begin by a short introduction. Um, aloha mai kako, o ka imi ko inoa no ho au mi i milo li'i, hana o ma ke kula o kua o kala, ipu u virtual academy, uh, la vai apono ma ka aina o milo li'i. So hello everybody, thank you for joining us today for this presentation. Uh, my name is ka imi ko piko, um, lineal descendant from this place. I am a teacher at the, our virtual school here at Kukala and I'm also a uh, Fisher, uh, a practitioner, and um, I'm also the director of our nonprofit, Kalani Hale, who is putting this proposal together to submit to the state. So um, if you guys are familiar with CBSFA, um, this will be very interesting um, or a very familiar conversation. So I can um, share a little bit about it before Laila will introduce herself. Um, our Middle Community Based Subsistence Fishing Area, our, we call it Middle East CBSFA is uh, already designated actually in the area within the state. And now we are putting together a proposal as we wanted to share with you guys tonight about our management plan, which we just finished the proposed um, plan to preserve the traditional fishing practices. And we'll also be including a summary of the timeline that took us to get to this point over the past 30 years. And we will be um, share some of our goals and we'll move on to the proposed boundaries of the CBSFA and um, specific rules. Um, and some of our panelists might are uh, familiar because they have proposals too, and we wanted to share with you guys our proposals. Uh, so it's um, some may be similar and some may be a bit different. But um, just to share the CBSFA for us, it's been a long process that took us a long journey to know who we are and what we stand for. And we hope our hearts speak to you tonight on the um, the work that took us to get to this place. So, mahalo nui loa. Aloha mai ka ko o vaono Laila ka upu ko inoa. My name is Laila, um, born and raised out of Milolii. Um, my ohana comes from an ahupua'a neighboring the Milolii ahupua'a called Omoka'a. Um, raised Lavaita, raised La'au, and um, part of the Kalani Hale outreach coordination through the, um, with the Middle East CBSFA. Um, I just wanna mahalo nui, uh, the Maui Nui Makai Network for providing this space and place for us to um, reach out to others and, um, you know, teach, teacher efforts to our neighboring communities um, on our Middle East community subsistence, community-based subsistence fishing areas. Mahalo nui. Um, and like we said, um, Kehau will be running our slides, but she's here and she's been a big supporter for us. So we just wanted to um, also um, bring her into this space. So anyways, um, when I um, want to begin, I'm thankful that the poll, um, you know, a lot of people are familiar with the conversation that we're going to share. So that's really good. I think one of the great things is that we can um, pretty much update you guys where we're at and make it more personalized as we go over our um, presentation. But just to kind of give you a brief summary or timeline, <clears throat> the stewardship efforts uh, for our community started back in the early 1980s um, when our uh, former or current uh, nonprofit called Pa'apono 
created the master plan, which was a comprehensive plan that included everything from housing to health, education, and a lot of it um, was around traditional fishing practices because um, that is what we are practically, uh, our main lifestyle is. So that plan set the foundation on what we needed to Malama Mililii. And uh, 10 years later, um, the state finally passed the um, HRS 188-22.6, um, which was the, the beginning of the designation for CBSFAs, uh, which Uncle Mac was very involved with and uh, many other fishing communities. So that really helped align to why um, we fit into um, that proposal. And in the early 2000s, that's when we started to um, a Makai watch. And then in the 05, the legislator, legislature passed uh, Act 232, which establishes the Minuli CBSFA along with um, Moloka'i and uh, Haena. So we're very, very um, thankful that we were in um, the designation, but at that time, we weren't able to create any rules or management plan, I think for multiple reasons, but many, uh, the core was our community wasn't ready at that time. So it was, um, it took time, but um, you know, as you can see many of the work that we have already been laying on this timeline, you can see that a lot of, um, you know, our kupuna, our parents, our, our grandparents worked really hard to put forth a lot of the efforts um, that we are carrying out today. So eventually in um, 2015, well, five years ago, uh, we resumed our outreach. So it kind of took us time to come back to the circle and really start to ask these questions that we've been really, really wanting. So we started to do interviews with our kupuna, our ohana, our davaia, um, some of the keiki, um, different fishers, and we really wanted to understand what was the threat, some of the solutions, and also the status of our resources through, through these kanaka, um, giving their feedback and their observations. Um, in 2016, we took it a step further and we came together with a small group of us to discuss stewardship activities and um, our community goals. So that was a big step. And then finally in the last uh, three years, 17 and 18, we continued to build upon that feedback and we started to do regular monitoring of our resources. Uh, we completed a community consultation of about 90% um, of the families in this village. Um, we created the draft rules for species and then eventually we created a draft management plan. So we wanted to share with those things with you today. Um, we're also able to combine um, traditional ways of knowing and practices through guidances from also um, outside sources. And I wanted to just um, mention Uncle Mac Poi Poi again, because um, he led our Konohiki program in the last three years or four years. And it's been really a, a great part of our ability to understand the Konohiki mindset and be able to give us those um, contemporary science and knowledge systems that we can use. So it's been a very important um, connection and collaboration. Um, and then eventually in uh, 2019, uh, we submitted our, our rules with our boundaries to the state. And, we, and since then we have continued to do outreach. Um, unfortunately last year due, due to COVID, we had to uh, postpone, but we slowly been bringing this back and we worked during COVID to really put the plan together. So we have finally um, finished our, our management draft plan, which is very exciting for us. And it's been a really, just a lot of work. Um, as you can see, putting a CBSFA is not easy. Um, and many of our Maui Ohanas who are putting ones also can relate to that. So um, working with the state, specifically with the, the comp Department of Aquatic Resources, is what will be eventually happening in the next month. But anyways, uh, I want to um, talk a little bit more about the management plan and our goals. So uh, we have finally completed our draft management plan for Middle E. And the following are the plan's main goals and objectives. Um, with objective one, we want to um, ensure that the residents and visitors to Middle E have excellent fishing and abundant stocks by pre 
practicing respectful and responsible fishing. Um, objective two, our families and residents learn and continue fishing practices and have a, um, abundant catch now and for generations to come. Um, eventually our objective three, we also want residents and visitors to learn about fishing practices, rules and reasons for usage. Um, objective four, we want to integrate biological and traditional Hawaiian Konehiki monitoring, which provides an ongoing understanding of the abundance and continue condition of the resources. Uh, objective five, uh, we wanted to create a community-based subsistence rules that incorporate community testimony, best available practice, science guidance to reduce threats and um, to priority species. Um, objective six, here we hope to that the residents and visitors willingly comply with these rules with fewer violations as a result of strong outreach. And finally, with objective six, um, we want to we understand and address land-based sources of pollution that are impacting the nurture marine environment. So that one was added last um, to our management plan. So thus far, the rest of our presentation will be uh, focused on objective five, which is just the rules, uh, which include the proposed boundaries. So I wanted to um, now hand it off to Lila to share a little bit about the, um, the boundaries and the rules. Mahalo. Mahalo, cousin, for um, leading us into this. But um, whew, now for rules and boundaries for the proposal. Um, knowing that the designated Milo-Li Isibia boundary um, has been approved and we have it there, we're just here to, um, you know, set place rules and um, boundaries within the CBSFA to help in um, protecting this. But our CBSFA um, is, a, is a vast area and uh, um, it runs from Kipohoehoe in the north, um, in South Kona, Kipohoehoe in the north to Kauna, which is about 18.6 miles um, long and up to a depth of 100 fathoms. Um, now we're here to also share that um, with you, our proposed rules and boundaries for the CBSFA, keeping in mind that all of um, existing state regulations um, continue to apply. Yeah, um, aside from what we're proposing. Um, within the area, all fishing access will remain open um, in the entire area with um, different gear restrictions and um, seasonal rules that will uh, help to ensure stocks are abundant for this and um, future generations. But um, why these rules? A lot of what Kaimi went over was, you know, was to why these rules have come to play. But as a Hui, we realized that these areas, um, you know, we want to replenish these areas to make sure that they are abundant for um, future generations. These areas are also good grounds um, for our coral and fish resources. Um, the Pu'uhonuas that are distributed within the CBSFA um, also come into, um, you know, the good grounds to where um, pua fish is um, plentiful. But also we wanna open fishing areas that support fishers to harvest sustainably. And that's one of the, you know, the main reasons as to, um, as to why these rules. But um, as we move on to our different zones, one of our Pu'uhonua's, this one out of four, is called Pu'uhonua Papa. This area highlighted in pink that you see on your screen is towards the north from Cinder Pile to Papa Bay, uh, Cinder Pile and Papa Bay to Makahiki Point, which is about 1.95 miles. Um, our next Pu'uhonua, Pu'uhonua Honomalino, is um, from the north side of its bay to Pukeokeo. Now Pukeokeo is towards the south side of the bay, but a keave tree is um, is a, is the landmark in this area. Um, 
about 1.24 miles in distance. Our third Puhonua is Puhonua Kapua. Um, there towards the bottom on the south end, rains from south of Okoi Bay to Kaupo, which is about 1.2 miles long. And our final Puhonua, which is all the way down in the south, the little pink at the bottom, um, is actually from the north point of Manuka Bay to the south point, which is about 0 0.86 miles long. Now within these Puhonuas, we'd like to propose rules that will allow fishermen to utilize throw net and scoop net from shore and also utilizing hook and line from, from shore or vessel and the use of three prongs to spearfish. But what we don't want to allow is the harvesting of all three species of opihi, along with, with the no use of fishing gear other than throw net and scoop net from shore and hook and line from shore or vessel, which is so very important to, um, to keep in mind that there's no using of any spear guns or arbulet or no use of gill net or cross net within these pool honuas. As we move along to our other proposed boundaries, um, we'll start with our one that's very special to us. <clears throat> Call away. Um, as, as mentioned earlier, we were um, known as the last Hawaiian fishing village in the state of Hawaii. And due to those reasons is our, our traditional practices of opelo fishing. One of these zones highlighted in the yellow circle is one of those zones called the Opelu Traditional Management Zone, ranging from Pohakulo Loa or Two Stone in the north to Kapu Point in the south. Within this area, we'd like to propose a rule that will close fishing for opelu during the traditional opelu couple, or its closed months, which range from February 1st to August 31st yearly. Our next boundary <laughs> highlighted in orange um, is one area we'd like to propose as the Pakwikui rest area. Now, this area ranges from Makariki Point to Honomalino Point. In this area, we'd like to propose the absolute no harvesting of Pakwikui. And our final zone that is also dear to us, one that we utilize to educate our keiki and so much more, is, in, is a zone we'd like to call the Pua'i'a Minoli'i zone. Um, which ranges, it's a small zone ranging from the Miloli'i Lighthouse to Lailoa Point towards the park end. Um, within this area, we'd like to propose rules that would allow you to use three prongs to spear non-regulated species, the use of hook and line from shore or vessel, the use of throw net or scoop net from shore, the use of lay net or gill net, but also keeping in mind that existing rules from the state still do apply. What we don't want to, or well, don't want to propose within this rule is, is the use of spear guns or arbulets. And also the, the no spearing of certain species, as in the uhu, the pakwikui, the veke ula, the moana kali, and the uhu or the Mimpachi in this Pua'i'a Middle East zone. As we move on towards the species rules, um, stick with me, okay? <laughs> um, our first species we'd like to bring up is one that's very honored to our ohana down here in Milolii, is the Pakwikui. Here, um, we'd like to only limit five fish per day per person at the five inches, at least five inches in fork length, but also prohibiting from taking within the Pakwikui rest area, which ranges from Makahiki Point to Honomalino. A next ono fish, the kole, we'd like to limit 20 fish per day 
per person with the fourth length of at least five inches and no harvesting during spawning season. And their spawning season is from March 1st to June 31st. Our Opelu, one very known to us, um, which the first one is still under discussion, um, the harvesting of at least 12 inches in pork leg. But our main one is to prohibit the taking of Opelu within the Opelu traditional management zone. Um, traditional management zone, sorry, which ranges from two stone to Kapua during the spawning seasons of February 1st to August 31st. <clears throat> As we move along to through the species, um, our next one, um, one of the biggest too is um, uhu or parrotfish. Here we'd like to limit one red uhu or a female one per day per person a fork length between the inches of 14 and 20. So the minimum of 14 inches and the maximum to 20 inches in fork length. We'd like to also propose the no harvesting, the no harvest during spawning season, which is March 1st to May 31st. The no harvest of any blue uhu and no night spearfishing. These ones would apply more to the uli uli, the ahu ula, the ele ele, and the palukaluka. Further on into our parrotfish ohana, um, we'd like to also propose the limit of one blue and two red per person per day. These are all other species that wasn't mentioned in the, the big uhu category. <laughs> Um, next is our uu or mimpachi soldier fish. The no harvesting of them during this, their spawning season, season, which is from April 1st to June 30th. Opihi, um, one of the main ones too. The makaiuli and the alina lina. One gallon size bag per day per person with shell. The absolute no harvesting of coeles within the entire CBSFA. And finally, the prohibiting of taking all three species within all four Puuhonuas. Puuhonua Papa, Puuhonua Honomalino, Puuhonua Kapua, and Puuhonua Manuka. And next is the Aama or the thin shelled rock crab. The no taking of females with eggs in the entire CBSFA. The ula or spiny lobster, another one that's very ono. Um, limit two per day per person. Now another, getting towards the end of it, I just want to reiterate that all state rules, existing state regulations still apply. Yeah. But within our entire CBSFA, we'd also like to propose the no aquarium fishing within the entire CBSFA of 18.6 mile. Mahalo. Uh, mahalo cousin Laila so much for um, sharing about the boundaries and um, the species rules. Um, I know for some of our Maui Ohana, this is pretty like you can look at what we have and compare. Um, we definitely took um, a lot of different factors in, in how we created the boundaries and the, um, the rules and species that were pretty um, pertain to a lot of the Ohana over here. So it's sometimes it's very specific, but um, we're very glad. Um, you know, that we have gotten to this point. Um, as we move forward, we are still um, working towards the process. Um, I know for some of our Maui communities, you know, they have already gone through the door and 
are waiting. Uh, we are just about in uh, the process to finally hand this off to um, um, Dar with Luna and Brian to take it to the stake scoping. Um, this is very a uh, critical point for us because we've been through doing this for so many years, um, trying to get our families together and really, really try to, um, you know, educate and bring them to this point where we're at. So this has been a big step for me and many of our Ohana, and um, we will be hoping to hand this off um, as it is in its current state with the management plan in August. And then they, uh, we believe there's some type of scoping that we would want to co-facilitate with um, DAR and then public hearing through chapter 91. Um, we have here um, a petition that we have been circulating. So we've been doing presentations with different community and organizations, um, really trying to see um, a lot of people's feedback, um, different fishers, different groups, so we can have, um, you know, be prepared. Um, and I think, you know, for us, it's been uh, pretty positive feedback. So we're very thankful. Um, uh, if you want, there's a QR code that we will drop in the link and it will be nice to share. Um, we do have a social media, uh, Middle East, Middle East CBSFA um, that we use and we have an email as well that you can connect with us and share. Um, just today we find finally um, put our post up to really push the petition. It's just starting um, because we kind of getting to the end of our um, our outreach. We'll still do outreach alongside the state, but this is where we are um, seeing, you know, all the work we put into uh, what we have. So we're very excited and I'm just thankful that we can share with all of you guys today. And if anyone has questions, we more than likely can take questions from the panelists are um, from anyone who um, wants to ask questions from the um, audience, the attendees in the chat. So, um, mahalo nui. Thank you so much for listening. Um, and I just thank you guys all for giving us this time to share for our Maui Ohana. Mahalo Kaimi and Lila and Kehau. Um, we do have some questions in the chat, so I'll go ahead and start off with those and then panelists, if you have questions, you can jump in after that. Um, we have three questions from Emily. The first is, how did you select 100 fathoms boundary and how far is that from the shore approximately? Um, okay, so the 100 fathoms is um, more so on what I it's already the existing CBSFA outline rules. So we are using that as the same um, uh, guidelines for Middle E. And from the shore, it's our reefs are pretty short, so it's not too far, 100 fathoms. Um, we're still within the, you know, one of those big questions people were asking is, is it affecting the other types of um, specifically pelagic fishing? But we are still fall right in between those zones and we will, um, our opelokoas are on the 100 fathom ledge too. So um, that was kind of how um, we got the 100, 100 fathoms um, uh, deci uh, um, decision for our proposal. Um, I don't know, I'm not sure the other communities of what the distances are, but I think they're in similar um, areas too. Thank you. Um, we have another question. What was the process to select your pu'u honua? Okay, I can um, start and maybe if Lila wants to add. Uh, what we did was, um, when we did the consultation, that was a critical part in the first re first round in 05 when we weren't able to put the rules together was back when in 2015, we came back and we did a intense consultation with the families. And from there, we were able to draw on the different areas that were very important to them, that we could have some information that 
It was a place for a uh, nursery or a, pl a place that needs to be protected. And from that data, from that conversation, we started to really um, go through the historical places that our kupuna would go and use um, for specific spawning and stuff like that. And these four bays were these critical habitats for many of the species that we are trying to protect as they are um, the ones that are being affected the most. Um, and I I think for the Pohono, that was how those decisions came into, into light. Um, I think um, beyond that, we had some other data, but mostly it came from the testimonies from our families and from our also some of our, our own monitoring, but not um, fully came from uh, the monitoring. It was a combination of a few things. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to ditto you. I mean, if it wasn't for the stories from our kupunas and then our biological monitoring processes that we've been doing through the past years, um, just kind of confirms with our kupuna stories that um, these areas are are filled with, you know, pu'i'a in, in areas thanks to, you know, the currents and the wind lines that come within these bays. Mahalo. And Emily's last question um, is relating to the Pakuikui. Has your community noticed a big decline? Yes. Um, once we started to really dive deep into um, what the feedback was with many of our families, this one species was coming up the most, um, just because that's one of our favorite fish to eat here. Um, and that was the feedback on what we observed. And then some scientific data that was given from uh, the Wesawa'i Dar and also our own monitoring shown a lot of just the immense decline that is contributing to, I think even not only in, in our community, but across the state, um, there's other communities that really see a decline in this particular species. Um, and I just want to make another point as you know, we also are really heavily um, in the aquarium trade area. So we deal with a lot of, um, of those collectors and this is one of the top species that they collect. So we have a variety of uh, users and I think um, that has contributed to a decline in this particular species. And that's why it's been, that's why we have it highlighted in our rules. I think now I want to open it up to our panelists. Um, Auntie Claudia, did you have a question? <clears throat> you know, the Opihi bag limit that you, you uh, laid out seems a lot. Seems like that's a lot. Um, how did you come up with that as a one gallon bag per day per person? I mean, because I'm thinking like, you know, you get six guys and six gallons if you can go. Oh, no, that, that's definitely a factor um, we have considered because sometimes when you get specifically a lot of the Ohana go for um, parties, yeah, like the Paina. Yeah. So they take a bunch of them, um, people, and then we, you know, it's okay that, you know, at least if there's four or five guys, you know, we can justify it. But if, you know, if, if it gets worse, as, as we can see, a lot of people are now picking it to sell and stuff like that. It has gotten what um, some of our observations have been. Um, we believe when we create this pr proposal, it's going to really stop um, those constant people gathering. That is why I think in the Puhonoas, we are uh, not allowing any to be picked, but outside of the, the zones, we will make them pick the <clears throat> one gallon a day. So we're trying to curb um, the constant take. Um, you know, in the last year, our Makai Watch has observed probably a lot of um, more poaching than normal. And that's kind of been really something we've been very um, engaged in seeing how we can really um, 
protect more of these areas for Opihi. But I think that was how we came to partially of, of how much we feel one person can take per day. But, um, you know, we could eventually we might come back to the conversation if we don't see the replenishment happen. But that's how that, um, that um, particular limit came. Thank you. And then also I was um, wondering what has been the feedback so far or have you not, well, you must have gotten word out to at least the immediate community there, yeah. So what's the feedback that you're getting from these rules? So um, it's been a process. I think eventually in the beginning, they weren't very open, but it, um, as we continue to educate them, that was the biggest part was the educational component to our proposal was that we, you know, we went out, consulted, then we came together, created a conceptual map that would outline the threats of different species, and then came back to the community, presented them the rules, presented them, eventually now the management plan, um, it then became more apparent and the support has grown. So it wasn't immediately there, but it has grown in the community. Oh, yeah. And in the last six months, seven months, we have now done our outreach outside of the village to landowners, to people who are users, different fishing groups. And I think, um, you know, this is where we're at this point on this critical juncture to really, um, you know, now to educate the outside and see what they have to say. And I think that's where we're at. Um, you know, we will still have to educate many of our community, um, the Lavaya here, but it's an ongoing process because wow. we all live here. Mahalo, Kaini, and thank you for a great presentation. Thank you, Auntie Claudia. Um, do any of our other panelists have questions? Scott or Noilani, Uncle Mac? I don't have questions, but I just had, wanted to say mahalo nui for your beautiful presentation, Kaini and Lila. It was so enjoyable to listen to and to learn more about. And um, I also wanted to say, I like in 2005, did a walking door-to-door -door fishing survey with Uncle Damien guys, and um, Pa Kui Kui was on the list. And um, it was what I loved about that walking survey was hearing the different um, ways that our community has to see our resources. So, you know, some people say ha ue ue and some people say ha uke uke. So it's just neat to hear what fish are, you know, what is a delicacy in one place that's snubbed in another place versus how people say the resources that are dear to them. And I just love when you say something that's ono to you and your face just changes how you say the word. So I just wanted to say mahalo nui for your, for Scott, would you like to ask any questions or um, share any feedback with our speakers? Well, mahalo Kaimi and Nyla for your presentation. Very, very educational. And I guess the one um, point that I wanted to um, comment on and ask you about was just the, um, the emphasis on education and outreach as opposed to the sort of enforcement side of things, because that's something that we've talked about a lot of the idea of enforcement only goes so far and really working to make sure that people understand the reason behind the rules to get voluntary compliance. So people comply with the rules because they understand why the rules are there and how they're protecting mm -hmm. the resources for everyone and for future generations. So just wanted to see if you could talk a little bit more about that aspect of it and sort of what your, what your plans are once the rules are in place for continuing to provide that education ongoing to make sure that people really understand the reasons behind the rules and comply because they because they understand and because they want to um, participate in it. Um, that's a very good question, Scott. And, um, you know, when I was sharing earlier, because the history is really important to how, why it took us so long 
And at that point, when the, the designations happened, um, the biggest issue was that we didn't have enough time to go and bring the family and consult with them and educate them about this because um, I think the mindset was that uh, rules were being coerced and um, it was taking away from their uh, way of life or how they survived. And that's not the point. Yeah, when you look at the basis or the foundation of the CBSFA, it's aligns all with the Ahupua system, the Konehiki mindset, the stewardship. So I think once we came back into the Ohana and because we live on the resource, yeah, we live uh, in this five mile stretch in Middle East where 200 something Hawaiians live, we're so, you know, we're so on top of each other. Many of, most of us, majority of us fish and work and survive. Um, we just took it piece by piece. And I think even today we do have people that are supportive, but then, you know, they want to do what they want to do, but we have to always educate that we, we, I understand, you know, it's not us, it's maybe outside or however they want to share, explain it to us. We, we always come back to, you know, what's rule for us, our rule for them is also a rule for us. And we have put this massive outreach in the last year and two years to create these poster boards, to create materials, to build a social media presence. And I think that will continue no matter what. I think um, as we see, we go through this process now, as we take it to the next step, I think that's still gonna be our biggest focus is that while the state does what they do, we'll continue to educate our families, specifically the management plan just finished. So that's a big step where we haven't had enough time to consult with everybody, but the basis of what the management plan says will be along how we're gonna take care how we're going to do this, who's going to do this. And, um, you know, a lot of the work, a lot of what we have today, as you see in this presentation, uh, we have to partner with a lot of outdoor agencies. So um, in the beginning, we did work with TNC, so we were familiar with them. But in the last five, six years, we have really got a deeper relationship with Conservation International and Kehau, who is our nice person putting our slides here together has been so critical in making us feel confident and being prepared because it is a hard push when you as a community, as you know, Scott, has to do everything. And the state's just there continuing to say they don't have no money and, and the, the thing goes on and on and on. So I don't wanna go down that route, but um, we're trying our best to hold them accountable, hold ourselves accountable. Um, and if I don't get support from funding too, it's just a matter of, constantly having to work and majority of us do volunteer so it's just been a labor of love sweat heart tears and everything else and i just wanted to you know let you guys know about that um i know lila has just been on board for the last two years so she's been really seeing the bolts and nuts and all of that and she's been like really you know um opening up to seeing the bigger picture so that's all i wanted to let you know we'll be both doing it together <laughs> Can I say something too? And 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 Kaimi and Lala, they're so humble. Like this, yeah, volunteering, um, seeking out grants, but they they also are like community leaders um within yeah. their community, community servants and their day job. Um Kaimi is a, a kumu, um, Lila is a sub, she goes in. So, you know, you utilizing the um that that type of educational platform through like the physical school being a virtual academy down in Mililii, I think is a great hub to kind Kind of um promote these um sustainable um you know practices and mindsets um but then also you know they do a lot of you know the the lava camp has been going on for 11 years so that's another mechanism to kind of share out the the best practices and and um the rules and then also um they do a lot of um apprenticeships and um internships through like Alulike and other um, programs. So that that way they kind of are sort of building the next generation of um, Aloha Aina leaders for Mililii and, and the South Kona region. So I think that um, that educational piece is, is sort of like the foundation for um, mm -hmm. Mililii Ohana. And, and, you know, they got a lot of ways, Makai Watch through different avenues there. So yeah, yeah. mahalo. Yeah, I just want to ditto them both. I mean, mahalo nui. Um, it took a lot of work to get where we are now, and mahalo nui for creating this space so that we could follow more through this process. But um, education 
education lays upon the foundation of our, our Kupuna stories. You know, down here is, that's the, the, the baseline through the CBSFA, yeah, the traditional cultural practices. And um, stories has been handed down through generations. I mean, between me and Kaimi, we're probably 10 awesome. generations, 12 generations out of uh, Milolii alone. Um, I, I have a son of my own, he's 12, and he attends the, the Kuokala a virtual academy. So, I mean, what Kiha was saying is, you know, the educating our little ones and building them to become stewards and leaders of our community. And um, in order to, to do that, we need to set that that example. And um, a lot of a lot of the processes is is immersing ourselves into different programs that you know grow us deeper into um, educating ourselves to what we to what we live in and what we plan on sharing to our next generations or our next kikis coming up so that they can build and um, you know, grow through protecting and um, managing what, you know, what we have, what, I, what we have continued to keep sustained as our kupunas laid the foundation already for us. And our job now is to make sure we, you know, hold in this process and our, our kikis learn. And I mean, Lavaya camps, um, through the Kula, um, so many different areas where we just kind of shoot through to to educate. I mean, there's so many different ways and um, not to mahalo COVID, but, you know, virtually it went that way. And um, it, it was a good way. Even though we weren't face to face, um, we still could carry on the educating, even though we had to go virtual. But um, yeah, mahalo. All right, well, I'm just gonna jump in and say it is six o'clock. I do wanna be respectful of everyone's time and thank our speakers so much for um, being here and sharing their story and sharing their work and uh, letting us learn about the amazing work that you have ongoing. Um, Auntie Claudia, would you like to say any final words before we close out this uh, hour? Yeah, I just wanna say, <clears throat> you know, um, although we're the Maui Nui Makai Network, you know, we are always here to lend a hand. Um, if you guys need any help, let us know. We'll help in any way we can. And mahalo, oh, mahalo for the work. You guys are awesome. Mahalo. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Um, and I just want to quickly uh, share that our next um, speaker series is going to be July 15th. So this is our upcoming um, schedule. Please mark your calendars the third Thursday of each month. Um, and you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook for updates on any upcoming events and how to sign up for future events as well. Um, but thanks again to our speakers for being here with us tonight. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your evening. Mahalo. 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 Ahuiho. Ahuiho. Mahalo. Ahuiho. Ahuiho.